Hi guys, welcome back. This is Clyde here, live from the Leechburg Lights studio out in the workshop today. And we're working on part three of our video series on setting up your computer to run Lightarama and output E131. This section of the video probably is going to be the longest and maybe the most confusing. I'm going to make this as simple as possible. We're going to assume that you have an E682 SAN devices already set up with an IP address. We're going to open up a web browser, explain how to get onto the E682 uh, setup web page. Um, we'll go through all of the specifics that are important for getting this controller since I already have some specifics done on this controller uh, we're going to go through some things that we need to do in order to set it up for um, outputting DMX from one of the 682 clusters alright so out of the back of our uh, laptop we have an uh, Ethernet cable that we're running directly to the Ethernet jack on the back side of the laptop. Now, I'm just going to take this and flip it over the top here. And I'm going to open up my controller box, which is right here to the right. And I'm going to, on this side of the controller, insert the network cable into the WizNet and it's hard to tell from this angle but there's a little flashy light that flashes whenever the E682 connects up to the card with a network signal and it's on the WizNet it's not one of the LEDs so don't look for the LEDs to flash um, once we have completed this one step we also have obviously we have our power running to our board and uh, you'll see that I've also disconnected one of my pigtails for this demonstration. Okay, we're just going to turn on the computer. And if you were watching the last video, we're just, uh, which was part two, we were just finishing this Lightarama setup. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go in to um, uh, I use Firefox and um, what, I, what you're going to do is you're just going to open up any web browser and you're going to click in the address bar. Now I know my IP address uh, in order to connect from the Lightarama or from the uh, web browser into the 682 that's to the left here I'm going to have to type the IP address. Now it's important that you followed video one in the series to make sure that you can connect to the controller using uh, the network. The computer is set up on the uh, 192.168 network. So I'm going to type 192.168. Now something's already popped up here and I've, I've had quite a few of my controllers connected to this laptop already. I'm going to continue typing dot one dot three zero and then I'm gonna hit enter this is currently my e682 setup page and I'm going to I'm going to make the screen just a little bit bigger so that it's a lot easier to read from the uh, the camera now um, First of all, what you see going across here, across the top, is you have an IP address. And this is where, if we were setting the IP address to anything different, let's say um, we had a conflict and we needed to change the IP address, or we had a controller go bad in our show, and we just need to swap it out with a controller that works, all we would do is we would go in here and we would change our number to our IP address and then we come over here to the update systems and click the update systems information. Um, next we have a timeout. I'm not sure what that does. We have a receive mode. The receive mode is where we set up multicast or unicast for our E682 or the 6804. 
We're, for test purposes, we are going to receive the, uh, the, set the receive mode to multicast as opposed to unicast. Um, we don't need to worry about anything for the timeout value or um, the gamma value. I will say that test pattern comes in very handy whenever you're connecting up a set of pixels. You can literally change this number to any other value, and I typically like 24. Uh, 24 seems to be a, a, a nice RGB uh, chase. It's a wide chase with, I think, five or six pixels that chase from red, then to green, then to blue. And um, uh, if, if I were to switch this test pattern, then over, over on our uh, 682, you would see the green ready light LED on the controller actually flash really, really quick. If we were to, any time we change any setting on our E682, we have to make sure we hit the update settings. Next, we're going to scroll on down to the universe selection and packet statistics section. Um, this controller was set up for last year. I used it for universe 21, universe 18, universe 10, and I think universe 7. I'm not sure. Um, I'd have to go back and look into the, my Lightarama file. But, um, but I have already made the adjustment into Universe 1 because that's the universe that we're going to be running our test sequence off of in Lightarama. So we have to set up Universe 1 here in this section. And all we would do is we would change this to Universe 1. And then we click Update Universe Numbers. Now, it's very important that you do not duplicate any numbers more than once in this series. Also, changing these to zeros doesn't do anything for you. It automatically reverts to a, to a universe number that's not being used. Um, so, always select whenever, whenever you have open universes um, or open outputs for universes or universes that you're not going to fill in and you'll see later on when we scroll down, then make sure you use an outrageous number so that the 682 doesn't pull in data that it shouldn't be pulling in. So I'm going to change this to 101. Um, not that that matters much here because when we're in multicast, it just ignores the unicast ArtNet universes. So the E682 has the capability of running 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 universes multicast. Um, if you want 12, it can go up to 12 universes if you use unicast, which is one of the reasons why I selected it because I do have high universe counts. And then the, the final settings that we're going to look at is the output configuration. Um, we have four major outputs in the E682. So here's our E682. And as we look at this 682, what we uh, what we can see is we have 12 or uh, 16 outputs total, and these 16 outputs are broken into four sections. These are I, I call these keys. This is the key to get into your um, into your outputs, and these outputs they all pop right out. You can take them out and and you screw the um, you screw your wires your uh, pigtails into these. Now. Um, for the E682, it has sets or clusters, and it, that's evident by looking at these network resistors. There's uh, a network resistor, and there's two sets of IC chips for each cluster that's listed here on the board. So this is the first cluster. This is the second. This is our third cluster, and then the fourth cluster. When you take these keys off, and I'll remove this one here, It, it's kind of hard to see without much light, but there is a marking in there that says 1-2, and then there's a marking up above that says 1-1. So, there, maybe you can see it there. 1-1 and 1-2 is listed right above there. So, the order of the output is determined by those labels. So, this is cluster number 1, output 1, 2, 3, 4. Cluster number two, output one, two, three, four. Cluster number three, output one, two, 
three, four, and so forth. Now, that's all of the specifics of this board that you really need to know for setting up the, um, the remaining set, uh, setting. So now what we're going to do from here is we're going to look at the output configuration. We had on the setup page, it shows outputs number 1-1 to 1-4. That's cluster number 1, output 1 through cluster number 1, output 4. You have the second cluster, third cluster, and then the fourth cluster.